Welcome back everyone to another MX Revival video featuring our brand new 2020 SSR SR300. My name is Charles. I own MX Revival, mxrevival.com. Man, the numbers do not lie. This bike, algorithmically speaking on YouTube, proves to me that you guys want more, much more. So here I am. I'm ready to give it to you. Video number two. We are breaking out the mods for the SR300. If you guys haven't had a chance to see video number one yet, where I bought this bike, took it out for the first time, and had actual riding footage, I'm gonna go ahead and link that right here so you can get caught up and up to speed. In a nutshell, video number one, you're gonna see this thing in use, actually out on the trails, panning over ruts, rocks, and holes, and you're gonna get a good feel for what I did like, what I didn't like so much. And as you can see, I must have been having fun, right, because the bike's ripped apart, we're gonna start throwing mods at it next. Now I firmly believe this bike is going to be great for so many people, be it the price point, what it can do, how it runs, all that. And so I really wanna see how far we can take it. I wanna see what we can do for this bike to make it even better. I mean, it's affordable, it's good looking, and just like any other bike, when you buy it, you start to personalize. And so here we are. Now before we get into the meat and potatoes of today's video, I just wanted to let you guys know that because the videos can become rather lengthy, I'm going to go ahead and break it into chapters using timestamps, and those will be in the description below if you guys need to jump to a section or you're short for time. The last video was over an hour, so if you made it through that video, which also has timestamps on it, I really appreciate you. And again, I appreciate you for watching today as well. All right, so for today, we are focusing on the fuel system. If you saw video number one, you saw me complain about it, you saw me re-jet it trailside and take it back out. Once again, my boys at Electron have really stepped up to the plate. They have provided us with one of their brand new 38 HV carburetors, and we are going to stick it in the Chinese bike for the very first time ever. So that's exciting. So even though I think that this bike in stock form is definitely rideable for most, even better after the rejet. I know there's more in there. I know we can squeeze more out of this bike, better consistency, and that's where the Electron 38HV really comes in and really shines. I also think it's important to note that this is still more of a two-stroke style carburetor. It will directly replace the carburetor that was in it. We'll be able to reuse the stock uh, throttle housing above, and this will be supplied with its new proprietary cable, which will go right into the housing. So it's very straightforward, but there is also another variant of the Electron carburetor that's actually four four strokes, and it's quite a bit more expensive. It's closer to 750. It comes with a bunch of other accessories. It's basically a full swap from the carburetor all the way up, throttle housing, tube, you name it. So the reason for this is twofold. One, at this bike's price point originally, this carburetor makes more sense. Two, it should clean up drastically all of my complaints and probably gets a little more power squeezed out of it up top as well. So. This is the right carburetor for the job, we believe. If you have an older carbureted race bike, like the late 2000s Honda CRF 250R, for example, you would want to go with the more expensive carburetor, which is the Gen 2 four-stroke carb. So not only should this make the bike run a lot better, but the smoother you can get a bike to run, no matter your ability level or where you are in your riding career, consistency is going to make you more confident. It's gonna make things easier to ride and it doesn't matter your, your ability. Who doesn't want that, right? And so this, my friends, is our remedy right here. Before I get too far down the rabbit hole, I may be failing to realize that some people are not yet familiar with electron carbs. And if you aren't, that's okay. Basically, it is a jetless carburetor. There is no swapping of jets. Basically, if you have a carbureted bike and you absolutely hate changing jets, or you notice swings in your bike's runnability due to elevation going up or down, temperature, what have you. These guys right here take care of that. This is about as close to EFI or a fuel injection that you will ever get on a car rated bike. So when we get a customer order, we will set these up at the factory, literally build them for your bike right there, for your exhaust, your fuel type, your style of riding, your base elevation. And so most of our guys, 99% of the time, don't even need to mess with the settings. They simply set the idle and go. Once in a while, we'll get a guy that has a, a special bike or something like this that is uncharted territory and maybe we need to spin a few things maybe they have a big bore kit port polish something fancy or maybe you know even their reeds are worn out and we don't know that and the bike doesn't run right but at any rate these are plug and play for the most part and we're really proud of that so believe the hype if you heard good things they're true and we're going to prove it once again now when i got back to the shop after my first ride on this bike i immediately washed it took it apart I knew this was going down. I wanted to bring this to you guys. Since this bike is uncharted territory for electron carb, we needed to get the old unit out, slap it on the bench, and take a bunch of measurements of the intake, engine side, all the flanges in millimeters, and then provide a build sheet to my guys at Electron. So we wanted to make sure we get something that will slap right in, something that's appropriate for this bike. And as I mentioned earlier, some bikes may need a little tweak. This would fall into that category. 
and as such, uh, Electron has even provided a different metering rod, which is basically like a carburetor needle that goes in here. And that's just in case the preset rod is just a little bit off, but it should be a great baseline, if not perfect. So in addition to today's video, I'll be showing you guys how to pull the carburetor out, take all the measurements you need. If you are trying to get one of these on a bike that they don't have a data log for, like an old vintage bike, some other situation like this, and you'll be able to actually have us build you a carb for your application. If you fall into that category, there is a contact link in the description below, and that will help me forward you the build sheet you need that you'll see here shortly. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Welcome aboard. Let's jump into this Electron mod. I appreciate each and every one of you guys for stopping by and watching. And if you wanna see more, consider subscribing. I have everything from the Chinese bike build series to a YZ300 for a customer in Pittsburgh to a couple of magazine bikes. I'm gonna do another dirt bike giveaway in the near future. And it's just overall dirt bikes all the time and metal music. So whether you like that or not, that's me. Welcome. All right, guys, welcome to what I like to call first person shooter mode. I love this camera setup and I am extremely excited today because this morning I got off the phone with one of my buddies at Electron and we're going to go ahead and develop a first ever carburetor for the beautiful SR300S we have on the lift stand today. And today I wanted to show you guys how we're gonna go about doing that. I've laid out some of the tools we're gonna need from ratchets, 13 millimeter, six millimeter Allen, five millimeter Allen, quarter inch drive rattle gun, three eighths drive rattle gun, screwdriver, something to write with, digital calipers for measuring the carburetor when it comes out. And then we have this build sheet. We'll be using this build sheet in conjunction with the calipers and of course your fancy pen to take all these different measurements Electron needs on the stock carburetor. Once we get all this information back to Electron, we're gonna be able to develop a brand new carburetor for that beautiful bike over there. We'll be able to put it through its paces, probably make huge gains and improvements with this bike. And most of all, I'm excited that it will be an exclusive product on the MX Revival website. So without further ado, let's rip that carburetor out. All right, now before I get too ahead of myself, I forgot to mention a couple things we're gonna need. You need a 17 millimeter box end wrench to get the plug off the bottom of the carburetor. Definitely some rags because there will be fuel and other greasy things. This tray is optional. I keep little parts in it that come out if I need to. And lastly, if you wanna keep the gas off your hands, go ahead and get a set of rubber gloves. All right, so SSR uses these six millimeter Allen bolts up here, which is kind of strange. Most bikes use an eight or a 10. I think the Yamaha might've used to have a uh, Allen key back in the day. Get that seat out of your way. Step number one, set it aside. Next up, we gotta get the airbox covers off. I'm gonna go ahead and just pull all the pieces of plastic because they're sort of interlocked to one another anyways. That will give us access to the top subframe bolt that is right back here. Then we can also pop the lowers and get the subframe out. Aside from the seat bolts, which had the number six Allen, all these other bolts have a number five Allen head. Oh, nice, they actually grease these bolts that are in the fuel tank so that they do not get corroded and stuck into the brass fittings that are in the tank themselves. That's very cool. We are already using rags because of the grease on the threads of those tank bolts, which I am thankful for. Some of these bolts have one washer behind them. Some of them have two. It's a mystery. In fact, there goes one. Some of them have none, so I don't know uh, if that's a inconsistency at the factory or how that happens, but we are not going to put these back in anyways. We have a solution, which I will express at a later date. That last bolt here. This should enable me to pull the plastics all off in one shot as an assembly, I would think. Put a hook there. And, yep, we were right, there they go. Go ahead and set these aside. Okay guys, go ahead and add a 10 millimeter socket and a 12 millimeter box end wrench to your list of tools we found under the rear right number plate some different hardware. It's actually a really nice looking exhaust system. Check out the welds here. I'm impressed, man. I mean, I have been this whole time. If you'd like, you can put back the bolts where they belong. Same thing here with the lower pipe bolt. I'll just put it back in the subframe for now. Go ahead and grab your flathead screwdriver and go ahead and undo the hose clamp here that holds the boot on to the back of the carburetor, the airbox boot rather. After that, go ahead and remove the tank strap from the subframe. Put that in your little tray. Proceed to blast the upper subframe bolts off. These are also 10 millimeter. Move on down to the lower subframe mounting bolts, which are 13 millimeter. 
So far, no different than any Japanese bike I've ever worked on. Pretty much exactly the same. You can now remove... Oh, I'm full of shit. I gotta get this battery wire here removed and out of the way since the battery is sitting in a tray that is part of the airbox stuffed into the subframe. If you guys need to, this is a great spot to take your cell phone out and get a couple photos of these zip ties. A lot of times things will go back together and you'll kind of wonder where things were. That's the perfect way to sort of data log as you take things apart, especially if you're one of those guys who takes things apart really fast. It will really aid in putting everything back together properly, ensuring that you don't have anything, especially like a positive wire, rubbing and grounding out while you're trying to ride. That's not a fun day. I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall one of these upper subframe bolts just for a few minutes. That way we don't have the entire weight of this rear end resting on the battery wires. Go ahead and pop the strap off the battery. You're gonna need an eight millimeter here to remove the battery ground from the chassis. Don't let that terminal touch the positive terminal unless you like fireworks. Looks like the easiest way to get this whole assembly out is to also loosen these four eight millimeter bolts. Clever little bracket. Go ahead and bust this free. When you remove the battery, be sure to use your thumb and your pointer to keep these little captive hardwares in here inside the battery terminals, otherwise they will fall out. Pinch like so, pull battery out. Okay, okay, now we're free. We can take this 10 millimeter out that we put back in and we should be able to just pull this thing straight back and off of the motorcycle now. Let's see. There it is. Okay, we're almost home free. We're gonna go ahead and set a rag in here so that we can remove the fuel line from the carburetor in anticipation of any fuel that may spill out. We have a couple little clamps like any other kind of bike down here. There's a little bit of gas. Fuel is off, of course. Almost made that mistake. Next, you're gonna take your eight millimeter. Go ahead and get this tank out of the way. Lift out of the way. Done deal. Okay, as you can see, we're getting pretty close. We have the carb cable. We're able to thread the top of the carb out. This will expose the slide and the needle and it will pull up and out of the way. We'll be able to then undo this band clamp and the carburetor should simply come right out. Let's go ahead and spin this top off. The bike is nice and clean and it's also new so we do not have a bunch of debris. If you do have a bunch of debris in here, bust out your air compressor or something first before you attempt this. Next up, go ahead and loosen this band clamp here. And once that's done, Rip that carburetor out of there. That's that. I'm going straight down because we did not yet use that 17 millimeter to drain the float bowl. So it's probably full of fuel. But that's that, carburetor's out. Um, it probably took about 10 minutes to do that. So if I make a really cool Christmas ornament on the Christmas tree, I think so because it's not gonna be doing anything else. Take one of your clean rags, ball it up a little bit. Make sure there's no dirt in this area here. Go ahead and stick this in the intake. Do not forget to take it out later. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and drain this sucker because we do need to lay it on its side to take measurements. And that is going to just basically have a bunch of fuel coming out all over our work service, all over our hands, all over the calipers. And if you're an environmentalist, well, I'm spilling fuel everywhere. So sorry about that. You can shoot a little compressed air into this thing, get some of the gas to evaporate. That might help with leakage on your workbench. But if you're not worried about it, you can go ahead and skip the compressed air altogether. All right, here we are on the bench. We need to go ahead and use this chart here, which is labeled A through F, and take all the measurements Electron needs. So we have our calipers. We're going to go ahead and fire that up. We're just going to go ahead and knock these measurements out. I'm going to go ahead and scan this over to my boys at Electron. We should be able to get something built here really quickly, and I'm super excited about that. All right, we got all of our measurements. Now we, all we have to do is get this information to the right people, and pretty soon we'll have something very special for this bad girl right here. All right, we got my man Brooks, all the measurements off the old carb. This should be everything we need to get her breathing and running and fueled properly. Boom.
Now we're gonna take the carburetor and go ahead and install it into the air boot. We're gonna to wanna to find out first if we can open the top of the carburetor after it's installed or if we should do that first and that's to get the cable routed into the slide and we don't wanna mess with it if it's too compact in here. So this is the first time for this bike. We need to figure that kind of stuff out. Do not forget to take that out. I've done stuff like that before uh, in the air box and wonder, oh, why, I, why doesn't my bike run? I was on a trip way out of town, finally figured it out. It's so embarrassing. Just don't do it. So, all right, I'm gonna weasel the carb in here and perfect. Goes right into the stock boot, clips right in. Man, like it was the stock car rider. It even had like a positive click, almost like a retention or detent. So that's great. We are able to access the top of the carburetor here. That's great. I think you can run a Phillips right there. This one is sort of under this uh, frame a bit and it should be no problem. You got about a 15 degree lean angle on a Phillips and you should be able to get it undone and tight. That's really cool. So I'm just gonna leave the carb there. And uh, while we're here also, you want to go ahead and get the carburetor up straight and down best you can. So there's sort of a casting line in the Electron that I like to use right here. And you can kind of align it with this little cast on the bike's intake over here. And then you'll be pretty much straight up and down. And now that I've done that, I cannot access this screw. So we're gonna leave it to the side for now. And we are going to rotate it back straight up and down later. No problem. Comes right out. When you open this, there's a spring. So keep your finger on it. You don't want this thing to get ejected or, you know, shot across the room, for example. Here is what is inside. You got the lid, the three screws, and uh, a gasket and a spring. So be aware of that. Now you gotta raise the slide out so we can get the cable in. So we have the slide loose here in the body, as you can see. So you can actually do this first with the carb off the bike. It's a little easier. Take the lid off, dump the slide out. But right now I have my hand in the intake side of the carb there and I'm just pushing it up with the metering rod. So either way is fine. And now you see this is where the uh, ball end of the cable sits in the slide. And when you rotate the throttle, it will lift up and down against the spring. So that's where we need to get the cable installed and then route it back out where this old guy was. And I left that in there on purpose because I pulled this carb out a couple weeks ago, the original one, and um, I didn't want to lose track of where this went. So it's going to be basically a guide now up to home base. Got the freshy cable. Okay, so they have provided us with uh, a nice elbow on this particular one. These cables come in uh, different shapes, sizes, angles, and what have you. And uh, we need to get this cable end here into the carburetor, this guy here. So we need to get the top of the carb, go ahead and pull the cable so there's some slack and get that sucker routed in, spin this on, and that is step one. So go ahead and get your cable through the spring and get your cable right into the center there. Go ahead and put the slide right back in. It goes slide, gasket, spring, and then lid. And then you can put your screws back. Good to go almost. Now we can use the screwdriver. This is a number two Phillips, not a number one, not a number three. All right, guys, we are snug on the screws. Now we can go ahead and rotate this carb to the straight up and down point I mentioned earlier. And you can see the guys at Electron are really smart. They understand that this bike is based off of a CRF, more or less, frame spars and what have you, fuel tank. So this angle here is really to help us get away from the fuel tank hitting it. And you know, hopefully we're still good. We have some battery terminals here. We definitely do not want to contact these. They do have a rubber boot that covers them that we need to put back on. But if the cable needs to go the other way, we can just hope that there's enough slack to make it to where we're trying to go over here. So. We shall see in a moment, but first we need to tighten up the carb now that it's straight up and down and then uh, set the tank in and just see if we have any clearance problems. All right, so before we set the tank, we're gonna go ahead and route the cable just as the old cable was routed. It goes right through here above the radiator. We want everything to be like for like when we set that tank and uh, make sure we don't hit or maybe we will. So got this here routed pretty much the same. Let's see if that tank fits. All right. I'm on the stops, so that's a good start. Oh, we got all kinds of clearance. I like that. All right, we have some five millimeter bolts back here, Allen head. Normally these are like a Phillips or can be an eight millimeter also. So, you know, something unique to the uh, SSR. Bust this bad boy open. 
you can see where the other cable end will uh, hook into the throttle tube itself down there. Looks like these two screws here under the uh, grip end will allow us to pull the entire tube out of the throttle housing. And there you have it. There is where the magic happens. Wheel is loose. It's actually kind of a pain in the ass uh, to get out. So in that regard, I like the traditional throttle assembly a little better. Wheel is out and now we can unthread this whole doodad here. Hopefully the electron cable is this same thread pitch. Uh, we did the best we could over email. You have your new cable, go ahead and slide that through and let's see if it's the same. Yup, killed it, perfect. So this is uh, just like all the other electrons, bolted in, ride your bike. You wanna hear that clicking sound when your throttle rolls all the way back forward. That is a good sound. Go ahead and dial this bad boy in here. Make sure this little uh, ball end comes out. As you can see on the Electron one, it could have easily have been left behind in the threaded area. So do that. Sneak it through the opening here where the throttle tube itself lives. Go ahead and pull, pin down, and now you have the slack you need to uh, reattach the throttle. And we remember we were in the back hole, so... Oh, the back hole. Hey, easy, easy, pal. Jeez, what kind of show is this? So. Now that's back in there and you'll be able to route the wheel into this cable right into the groove and you're, you're pretty much back in business. You just gotta bolt it all back together. Okay, so now we're gonna check the slack. Right now I have a very minute amount of play in here, which lets you know that the slide is bottomed out in the carburetor, which is good because you want that little bit of slack, maybe just a little bit less. That way when you turn your bars, your throttle cable doesn't get uh, pulled from tension in this area, which will then lift the slide and make the bike rev and take off. That is uh, not what we want. Maybe some of you guys like that, but uh, I'm not one of them. So uh, we have two points of adjustment here. You can do this here, adjust this out, which is the common place to do it. Now, as you can see, there really isn't any slack left in there. You can go tighter. This would be lifting the slide, the tighter you make it. Right there, there's no play. Uh, I'd be willing to bet you had a little bit of a high idle right there from the slide being up. So go ahead and make sure you have just a little bit of play in here. That way, when you turn your bars, you do not tension the cable, lift the slide, and uh, party on accident. This is the same because you also have another point of adjustment right here. So this is, uh, you know, when you can't get everything you need out of the one up top, you can come down here and you get it where you like it. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that and we're pretty much good to go. So we have now verified that this stock SSR throttle tube works with Electron, that's great. And here's the sounds you wanna hear. This is the sound of it topping out. This is the sound of it bottoming out. Top out, bottom out, top out, bottom out. So you have full range of motion up and down with that slide. We have all of our vent hoses just sort of dangling around. And then of course, the infamous yellow Electron fuel inlet. So we need to take off this stock fuel line. It has a little filter in it. Uh, it's pretty ugly, I'm glad it's there, but we're not gonna use that anymore. We're just gonna go straight off of the fuel petcock up in here. And all you need to do for that is uh, get a nice sharp razor blade, kind of measure it out by hand. You can hit it with a Sharpie if you want. I just cut that sucker. Right about there, go ahead and get it with the razor blade. Saw your way through and you'll be good to go. If you screw up, sometimes there's enough left over, but literally they always give you enough line. Like this is, like a freaking massive amount of a line. Now due to the fact that the petcock is way up here under this frame spar, it's really gonna help to get this a little bit wet. Um, just use a little spit. That's disgusting. All right, we only have these three hoses. We're gonna get them back in here behind the clutch cable. SSR uses a kind of a cool little tab down here, which I actually wish came on other bikes, but your hoses just snap right into it. Guys, at this point, we are hoses tight. Everything is secure, everything fits. We have no rub issues. We have adjusted our slide to make sure it's working properly. And there's just one thing left to do. It's time to fill that bowl.
Guys, you may be wondering, where the hell are his radiator shrouds? You know, I was wondering the same exact thing. Um, I thought they were here, and they're not, so. Not the end of the world, but truth of the matter is, they're down in Monterey, California, getting templated for a brand new MX Revival shop kit, and Jared is templating these shrouds. They are not exactly like the Honda, so we needed to go ahead and build our own, and that means good things for me, and that means good things for you, but the test must continue, so we are going to fire this thing up for the first time. It is a shroudless wonder, as you can see, but that's not gonna stop us. Okay, we are in full super view mode. We are going to fire this up for the first time and see how it goes. Bike has a key, key on, turn the fuel on, down is on, hold the choke, and hopefully the battery isn't dead. Bike's been sitting for about a month. Full cold start. We'll have a dead battery soon enough, I promise. Let's try it with a choke off. All right, no luck. So, when this happens, also relatively normal, especially on the four stroke, you need to go ahead and plug two of these lines and blow into one of them. And what that will do is introduce uh, fuel for the very first time into the engine, just a little bit. So, see how that went. Choke. All right, guys, so when your bike won't start, you got a couple things. You got air, fuel, spark. So we know we have fuel, we see it in the bowl, we know we have air. I went ahead and checked the spark and there is none. So as you can see, there was no arc or spark here on the spark plug. I got to tracing the uh, spark plug lead back to the coil and I can feel that it is disconnected. So I probably did that when I did the hour meter. So I need to get the tank back off and go ahead and reconnect this wire to the coil. And then the bike should fire right up. Man, that might be the first actual thing you dudes that hate on the Chinese bikes can actually get mad at. All right, guys, we're back together. Let's try this again. What? What? Okay, we had spark, we had instant life. That's good. A little rich. Oh. Choke was on, explaining why it was a little rich. Man, that sounds good. I'm tuning the idle by hand. Wow. Pretty happy with that. All right, so we've adjusted the idle. So far, so good. Electron living up to the name. So uh, why don't we go ride it? I think we need to see how this runs on the road. Man, this is good news. A little bit of bog. Let's bring that RPM up a little bit.
right? So the response is definitely well metered, better than before. more slack out of that. There it is. So much better. No idle raising when I turn the bars. It's good. I got all the slack out of this. Now listen. Hasn't done that yet. Awesome. Turn the idle down a little more. Kind of more acceptable. Still no bog. This sounds a lot more like a race bike now, doesn't it? Holy crap. What a difference. Okay, I didn't do wheelies before, that's for damn sure. Stock gearing. The thing wouldn't do anything even remotely close to a wheelie before. That was second gear, got itself up off the ground. Okay, we're doing wheelies. I could not force it to do a wheelie out on the trail park in the last video. <laughs> Guys, I think we did it. It runs so much better idles perfectly little fan going she is hot that's for sure wow what a difference i cannot wait to trail test that this bike could not get out of its own way in ride video number one. And uh, now we got the front end coming up in second gear with the stock gearing. I was thinking about going up to a 49 tooth in the rear, it's a 48 stock. Uh, we probably still will. This thing just got a hell of a lot more usable. That's for damn sure. Guys, what, did you hear that? This thing revs like a freaking Rape Dave. It revs to the moon. Oh man, I did not have to change a thing so far. I can't wait to get out and trail test this. It absolutely fires up easily now idles perfectly, sounds incredible, and it freaking revs like crazy. This bike could not get the front tire off the ground in first gear with the stock carb. I just picked it up in the road in second gear, so I really can't wait to get it in the dirt, but I can tell there are huge improvements. We knew there was more in there, we just found it, and now when we go use it, I, I really just can't wait to see what it does. So, Lectron, thank you guys for being there for me always. All my builds, I appreciate you, and you guys, Stay tuned for the trail test. Freaking listen to this thing. Where's the key at? I'm gonna go deaf doing that. That is way too much fun. This bike sounds incredible. Cannot wait to ride it. Guys. I appreciate you. Thanks for watching. Give me a like. Think about subscribing. There was much more to come with our China bike. Really, the only sketchy thing now is that 
The bike's probably gonna have a lot more power than it did before, but the suspension is still soft and undersprung, so I gotta be careful. I don't wanna go rack myself, but I think we just unleashed a beast right now. If any of you guys out there in the 300 crew need help getting set up with this, I've just dedicated a complete listing page just for the SR300. I'm gonna have all the mods I do, all the body modifications, all the fuel modifications, all the other modifications, that are swirling around up here that I've yet to let out. They're all gonna be available. Check it out, mxrevival.com. I'll leave a link below. You guys can see what I've come up with so far. I figure the more ground I can cover with this bike, the more of you will be able to enjoy it as well. Full ride test with Electron Carb coming in video three. Believe me when I say I have even more ideas cooking. I have some ideas about weight reduction. We have a cool graphics kit coming. You can see some of the body is changing. So stay tuned. I appreciate you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.